Hi, it's Goblin Henchman here. So, I've got something slightly different for you today. Um, it's not a hex crawl. Um, I basically had this idea for making a fully procedural dungeon, and the idea came from a post I read on G Plus from Jason Cordova. Um, he came up with this idea called a labyrinth move for Dungeon World. Um, Google it. And essentially, what he realizes is that. Um, Real human beings who want to play RPGs really wouldn't want to actually map out and explore a true labyrinth because it would be too tedious. So instead of actually doing that, he, he decided to come up with a, a mapless way of exploring the labyrinth, which is basically the players state their goal, you roll 2d6, you add them together, if they roll high they progress, and if they roll low they don't progress, or they go backwards and get more lost. And the idea is when they get enough high rolls they find their goal, so, you know, you're trying to find the heart of the labyrinth, or you're trying to get out. That would be the, the thing. So, for example, you spend 10 minutes exploring. Did we gain ground or didn't we roll the dice? And in a way, it's very similar to um, combat. In many RPGs, you roll a single d20, and that actually represents a lot of activity. Sword thrust, block, damage, parry, that sort of thing. Um, but it all comes down to one roll, because trying to do all those little steps would be a bit boring and tedious. And this is the same idea. One roll uh, decides how you do, or rather, summing 2d6. And I, I, I basically really liked the idea, and I thought, oh, what would be really nice is to apply this to a giant ant's nest, because a giant ant's nest is inherently um, unmappable, I think, by, by human, dwarf, or elf. So you just get the players trying to explore that ant's nest, and they either gain ground or they don't. Um, I adapted the, um, the labyrinth move to use 2d10, if you roll low, you, you lose a zone. If you roll in the middle, you, you progress, but you end up in a different part of the same zone. If you roll high, you gain one or two zones. And the idea is the queen ant is in zone four. You start at zone zero, and you're trying to progress towards it, kill the queen, and get out again. But I also realize you can make the whole thing, make a whole procedural dungeon using this concept, where a d4 represents the size of the chamber, d6. Um, the shape, D8, some notable feature like a smell, taste, or humidity, for example. D12, the attitude of the monster. And then I thought a nice other mechanic would be to roll four, to roll a D20 for, for each zone that you're in. So four D20s for zone four. And by using a um, advantage-disadvantage mechanic, you could weight the encounter such that you are much more likely to get a queen in zone four, and much more likely to get a mundane encounter in zone one and so on. Um, now of course this whole mechanic would work equally well um, if you changed it for a abandoned space station where you're trying to find the cyborg mastermind or even a, an archipelago, trying to explore an archipelago of islands where you know, you've got pirates in zone 1 but the sea hag is in, in zone 4. Um, now since I'm on this um, spreadsheet kick at the moment I realise you could adapt this idea of exploring the hive into a spreadsheet, the players state where they're, you know, um, so this does all the work for you. I mean, <coughs> so here you go, the players that we try to find the queen, and then you press forward. So in this case, they gain one zone, they find two worker ants, and they, they found in an amorphous, it's found in an amorphous room, um, it's a large, large size chamber, and there's a notable temperature, it's scorchingly hot. Um, next room, they gain another zone, they meet one worker ant, it's a polygonal room, um, has a notable smell, it smells like hung meat, and the occupants are building. So they try to go forward again, get another zone, no encounter this time. Okay, well, they've got really lucky, they found the queen in zone three. Um, there's a small probability of finding the queen in zone three. <coughs> and just for the record here, the hit points, this generates hit points for the monsters. Um, and this is an initiative roll if you want it. And these are the dice rolls, and these are the reference for these monsters in Monster Manual, Osric, and Sword, and Wizardry. So I'm going to pretend they didn't find the Queen because I just want to do a bit more. So here they're in Zone 4, they found the Queen. Now backwards, is I, I made it easier to go backwards and forwards because I figure there's more exits to the Hive than there are in, to finding the Queen in the centre. Again backwards. Um, there you go, they're on the outside again. So that's basically the idea. It's, it's completely procedural um, and it probably worked quite well for solo gamers. Um, uh, for example, or DM who wants to do something on the fly. Anyway, give me some feedback. Let me